Fellow nationals throughout the diaspora, within a matter of weeks, we will be celebrating our 26th year as an independent nation. An interesting irony, however, is that in order for an independent state to not only survive, but indeed to thrive, there must be a high degree of societal interdependence. It was with this in mind that my government decided a long time ago to place greater emphasis than any other government in the history of St. Kitts and Nevis ever had before on a consultative approach to governance. This has, been my, this has been made manifest over the years in our annual face-to-face -face sessions where members of my cabinet gather in one place to meet with and respond to any and all members of the public on any and all questions. You're also aware, I am certain, of my weekly Ask the Prime Minister radio show, which is broadcast by several radio stations, and during which I respond to all and any questions that the public decides to raise. Our national consultation on the economy, which has been in place for a number of years, enables my government to glean the very best insights and comments from a broad cross-section of the public as we prepare to craft the federal budget. And just last December, you will remember, we held our national consultation on crime, which resulted, among other things, in the highly subscribed and highly successful Second Chances Youth Empowerment Through Skills Project, or as we refer to it, the YES Project. In two weeks, my government will be hosting this year's national consultation on the economy, at which time representatives from the church, the manufacturing sector, labor unions, service industries, civil society, and others will gather to share with the government their insights and suggestions regarding the budget for the upcoming fiscal year. What I wanted to share with you this morning, however, is the fact that the Honorable Timothy Harris, Minister of Finance in the government of St. Kitts and Nevis, has wisely decided to move forward on this annual undertaking while adding a new and important dimension to the proceedings, that is, the interplay between federal budget priorities and our youth's prospects for stability and self-actualization. In light of the importance of the youth to the feel and the texture of life in any country, I thought that you would want to know this. Finally, I began by noting the paradox that the nation's success as an independent state often depends on a high level of societal interdependence. And so at last is Jubilee celebrations and today as we move toward our 26th anniversary of independence, I have been urging our fellow nationals to focus not only on the flag waving and the parades, even though they are, of course, very important, but to also ensure that we never lose sight of the fact that although we are the smallest nation in the Western Hemisphere, we have managed, all of us, regardless of political affiliation, social or economic class to create a nation that is stable, a nation that is democratic, and a nation that is holding its own when far larger and far more powerful nations are having great difficulty in doing so. In this regard, I have been asking nationals at home, as I ask you today, to think of your fellow nationals in the weeks ahead. And remember, in the quietness of your heart, as September the 19th looms, the ways in which you, our own fellow nationals from all walks of life have made it possible for St. Kitts and Nevis to be the stable, democratic, and progressive country that it is today. As we move toward this important anniversary then, my fellow nationals, I urge that we commend them 
and that in the privacy of our hearts we thank them, as indeed we commend ourselves for this country that together we have built and to which we are now so blessed to belong. Thank you.